whether or not the governing ANC had taken a resolution that South Africa as a country should exit the ICC. Now, the joke was going around, it was exiting the International Cricket Council. That isn't what we're talking about, the ICC, the International Criminal Court. Well, President Ramaphosa said as much this week, but then the presidency had to do a bit of an about turn, saying the comments were made in error. It's quite an error to make. Well, let's hear from uh, international law expert. It's Professor Diet Lady uh, speaking to us uh, now all the way from Switzerland uh, this morning. Prof, I appreciate your time. I'm not sure what time it is in Switzerland, but it's nice and early. A happy Freedom Day to you uh, all the way from Johannesburg. So where has this conversation come from, do you think, to leave the ICC and the Rome Statute? Do you agree or disagree? Um, well, I mean, I, I think so to, to answer your first question, where does this conversation come from? I guess this conversation began or re-began because we've had it before with um, the possible visit of uh, the Russian president uh, for the BRICS summit. Um, so, so it obviously restarted the conversation mm. um, about whether or not we should remain because it, 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 it would place us in a difficult position in terms of uh, competing obligations, uh, so to speak. Is it even possible to just up and leave the ICC? I can't imagine that as a country, as a government that's been signed into the Rome Statute, uh, that you can just get up and, and leave. How would that even work if, as a country, we wanted yeah. to do that? Yeah, I mean, l legally, it's possible to leave, but I don't think it would have the desired effect. It, you know, it wouldn't have the desired effect um, because assuming you, 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 you were able to complete all the processes for leaving, you know, and there's quite a lot of processes for leaving, um, the, um, the effect would only take, um, or, or the leaving or the withdrawal would only take effect a year afterwards, right? So let's say you were able to have it done by July. Mm. Um, we would still remain a party to the ICC statute until July of 2023, um, uh, until July of 2024. But quite apart from that, um, the obligations that we have now would remain on us um, um, in perpetuity. So, uh, so if there's an obligation right now to arrest the, the head of state of Russia, then 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 that particular obligation, because it 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 came into effect while we were party, would actually remain. So it wouldn't have the desired. Effect. So a lot of this also to do with the visit, the recent uh, state visit by the Finnish yeah. president, uh, Soli Naniz, uh, Nanisto, uh, as well. Yes. Luckily, the uh, flagpole didn't actually hit uh, the Finnish president, luckily for that. That would have been fun to watch. Uh, but uh, this has also got to do with, as South Africa, we sit very awkwardly between the West and what the West wants us to do, and then what seemingly is everybody else, BRICS, et cetera, et cetera. So this puts us in a very tricky situation, doesn't it? I mean, are we just trying to create, or, or rather unintentionally create, a drama for ourselves? Is it time for us as a country to just pick a side, or can't we do that? Well, I mean, I think, um, so two things. First of all, I think that's a purely international relations question. I, I think we're, you know, in the middle of many things. Um, um, but really from a, um, so the perspective of, of, of law um, and legal obligations, um, we we wouldn't be the only state to have a, a, an, an ambivalent approach, if you like, um, to the question of whether or not there's a duty to arrest a sitting head of state. Mm. Um, I did some research about five or six years ago on, on this particular approach, and it's very clear the Nordic countries, I mean, it's interesting that you started this particular question by reference to Norway. It's very clear that, uh, um, it's very interesting that the Nordic countries, um, even though they're generally known as very strong supporters of the ICC. In their domestic legislation, they have retained this notion of immunity, right? And so in the domestic legislation relating to the implementation of the ICC statute, some Nordic countries have retained this notion of, of, of um, respect for immunity. Um, and, and, and by the way, just on this point, it's, I think, important to understand um, we had a case against us um, you know, we as the government, or the, um, so the government in 2020, uh, in 2015, where the Supreme Court of Appeal decided that we were duty bound to arrest, notwithstanding that the person in question in, at that time, um, um, so Al Bashir, um, was a sitting head of state. Um, but what people don't realize is that that particular judgment was very nuanced. The judgment began by describing what, in the court's view, was the international law obligations. And the court ended by saying, we recognize that under international law, there is this duty to respect immunity. We, we recognize that. And then the court said, but we don't apply international law. What we apply is domestic law. 
Mm. And so let's turn to domestic law and sort of look at what domestic law says. And the court said that your own domestic law, the Rome Statute Implementation Act of South Africa, this is not some international instrument, your own Rome Statute Implementation Act doesn't recognize immunity for the purposes of cooperation with the ICC. So from my perspective, this makes the solution relatively simple. I mean, the solution is if you don't want to find yourself between these two worlds as you describe it, it's simply to amend your domestic legislation. Right. And now, again, I don't know if there's enough time between now and then, but that's the solution. And it's, it's, it's I guess, something that the government ought to have done in 2015 um, um, if, they, you know, if the government really felt this, was, this remained an issue. Mm, yeah, there, a lot of criticism here at home in South Africa suggesting it was actually a bit of a knee-jerk reaction with uh, the planned visit of Vladimir Putin to our shores in August uh, for 15th BRICS uh, prof. Uh, so I think that's where this has come from. It doesn't seem like even if, the, as you say, the government wanted to, they're going to have time to uh, do it and do it the way they want to, if they even want to do it. But prof, what a pleasure. Thank you very much uh, for taking time to explain you, legally what that was. I know I snuck in an international relations question, but the prof handling it beautifully as always. Uh, Professor Diet Lady. Uh, joining us this morning, international law expert, uh, just dipping into relations for me slightly. He was very kind to do that.